were just left there, the mullock heaps were just left there around the mine. Of course, they just left a gaping big hole in the ground, and then eventually it just all shut up. They decided to establish an aircraft depot here, which was a maintenance facility. At the end of the Second World War, Oakey became a major storage area. Between 550 planes, they're quite a picture. Boomerangs, Kitty Hawks, Spitfires and Mustangs here at that stage. It must have been incredible days, actually, to see all these aircraft, hundreds, literally hundreds of them. I didn't count it as an aerodrome. Didn't look like one, didn't smell like one. It looked far beyond what you could comprehend. It was just like a sea of aircraft all neatly lined up. It's just mass. And nobody really cared. I came to the base to be engaged in breaking up the fighters that were here on the base at that time. But I don't believe they got the absolute last. But the stories of Spitfires down mine shafts keeps popping up all the time. Almost immediately at the end of the war, trucks left this place loaded up and they'd go off in various directions. They were away for about an hour and they came back and they were empty. I remember the drive through theatre that was here once was had the reputation of having Spitfires buried under it. Wherever there was an available hole in the ground, whether it be an abandoned mine or a, a gully that they could fill in, they dumped stuff. The time that I was here on the base that six months, I would have thought that I would have heard something, the myths or whatever you like to call them, about the buried aircraft. Aircraft components were placed in mine shafts, every hole in the ground around the area for disposal purposes. Not assembled aircraft, they would have been aircraft in crates. Well, they could see the plane still wrapped up in, in packing crates and everything laying down in the bottom of the shaft. Everything was accounted for in our service, every bullet, every item. Looking back, in hindsight, I'd say the security was null and void. Kids were able to get in here. I mean, it wasn't fence security that, that there is today. Somebody had come along with an old Dodge 4, running on peeled carrot, off into Oakley, away we'd go. I believe they had guard dogs and that sort of thing, but crikey, they could have been more pets than anything. But the Alsatian dogs were along the back line, we all knew them by name. We could go up and talk to them and pat them on the back and we'd go in. I believe that there is only one story that I have any total genuine acceptance of. A first-hand account that Nev and four of his mates actually dug a hole with pick and shovel over a number of weeks. They buried a box with a Spitfire in it. He was here at the end of the war. They were told that they couldn't leave the Air Force until their hangars were empty. He said to his boss one day, you know, when are we getting out? And he said, well, as soon as that last aircraft is gone. There was a bulldozer working nearby. And they got him over and he dug a trench beside the hangar and the aeroplane was put in it. Maybe there is some credibility to, to these stories because it's, it's probably the one story that does keep coming up. We need to keep looking. What we need to do is put it to bed once and for all. You know, the mind can't help but wander, you know, and you think about taking a shovel and, and striking out on what would be the ultimate treasure hunt. Come and have a look at this. I think we've, we've hit gold here. This is not farm machinery. This here, parts of airplanes, I am certain of it. 